Hello guys, my name is Behroz and welcome to this channel where I share with you tips and tricks that I use and learn in order to become a best version of myself. Now most of you know that I'm very much into personal finance and I believe strongly that tracking your expenses is one of the core ways in which you can achieve financial freedom. So in this video, I will share with you how to create an Excel based simple and easy expense tracking tool. It is simple because you can populate and maintain it with a few clicks. And it is easy because the format is very user friendly and you can read your performance in a glimpse. First of all, we'll open the Excel file. We'll create three worksheets, one for income to capture all the income inputs. Next for expenses to capture all the expense inputs. And last one is summary, which will summarize all your expenses and income in an orderly fashion so you can read it and take corrective action. In order to automate expense tracking, I highly recommend to try and avoid using cash to pay for your expenses. Rather, either do it via credit card or otherwise debit card. This way we can simply export expense details from your bank account into the expense tracker. Simply by copy pasting as against recording each expense activity manually one by one. To make populating the budget file with details fast, simple and easy, it's best to construct it in the same format as that of your bank online statement. So here is the format that is used by my bank for my online statement. So first start with opening your bank account and copy the headers from your bank online statement and we will paste that header in the expenses sheet. Add account type in case you have multiple accounts from where you are pulling the data. Example credit card or debit card or if it's purely a cash expense, you can code it as such in this column. So we'll select all the expenses from our online statement, copy them and paste them in the Excel file under the expense sheet. So make sure when you paste here, you paste an unformatted version for which you need to do Alt E S and then select text. In account type, I'll mention credit card because these are all the expenses that were captured in the credit card. Also add a column here for the month. So here you can just directly punch in the month. This is what you see here. So it's Feb. So I'll put Feb 22. And then you can simply copy and paste it all along where you have the month Feb. Here I will freeze the column so I can see the heading as I move down in this sheet. In order to freeze the column, view, go to freeze panes and press freeze panes. Here for instance, if I have a cash entry, I'll just put cash in the account type, the month and the expense type and then populate the key. So this expense can get pulled in the summary sheet. Now let's populate the income sheet. Here we can put in month and then income earned. The reason I have different months here is because the income, even if you're salaried, is not exactly same each month just because how the taxes and other pensions and employment insurance work. Let's say my income is around $6,000 per month. So for the first four months, I earn 5,500. And then for the balance of the eight months, I earn 6,500. And my total is equal to write sum and select all the cells. When you select all the cells, you'll get a total here, which is 74,000. You press equal, select the cell, divide by 12, and you'll get the monthly salary, which is 6,166. So it's best to keep the total here and then bring average here. Now we go on the summary sheet and here we'll need to put down all the buckets that we want to collect our expenses into. So the buckets that I usually use are rent, car, this includes insurance and car installments in case it is on financing or lease, fuel, then I have gym expenses, network expenses. Network expenses include internet and mobile, utility is gas and electricity, water, grocery, extracurricular activities. These usually pertain to my kids, their uh, extra activity classes, after school classes, eat out. Entertainment are things like going for a movie or booking a cottage or something like that. Shopping, miscellaneous, expenses that are not linear, like they're they are not recurring, they just happen once in a blue moon. Then hygiene and savings. Hygiene is to do with house cleaning, barber, stuff like that. Saving is primarily fixed amount that I put in my long-term pension and my kids education plan. And then I leave some other columns in case I want to add them in future. Previously, I used to have daycare, but now my kids are grown, so I don't have daycare anymore. But someone has other items, they can add it here. And then we get to the total. Here we'll add the months. Make sure the format that you use for the month is exactly the same that you have in the expense sheet in the month column, which is month and then the year. And then give a slight gap and put here the following P12M, which is past 12 months, P6M, which is past six months, and P3M, which is past three months. Here we will average out the expenses for past 12 months. In this column, we'll average out the expenses for past six months. And here we will average out the expenses for past three months. 
This is just to track a trend in your expenses. I personally believe this is the most important thing for you to identify anything that is an outlier and see how you can improve and fix on it. In the total, you can total all the rows. Copy and paste it across. Control C, Control V. I'll hide these because we don't need them for now. We'll get total expenses here and then net. Now we'll go back to the expense sheet and tag each of the expenses, either one of them. In this column, we'll write expense type, then classify those expenses one by one. First one is grocery. We can ignore anything that has a credit. We are just looking for expenses here. This is a flight for entertainment. These are parking charges, so I can classify them as miscellaneous. Anything to do with Uber is also car for me because it's transportation expense. Now, once all the expenses have been classified, here in column A, we'll create a key which will help us pick each line item into the summary sheet altogether. So we'll do equal to month, go on the month, press add, and then go on the expense type, and then copy paste this across, control C and control V. Now we go on summary sheet and put the formula there. And here we will link the summary sheet in a way that it extracts all the data from expense sheet and income sheet. For this, you'll need to plug in the following formula, sum F, For range, go back to expense and select the range from the key, comma, then come back to the summary. Here put a bracket, select the month first because in the key we selected the month first and then add and then the rent or the expense type, close comma, close bracket, comma. Go back to the expense and select the value column. These are the values that we want to bring in in an organized way into the summary sheet. Close the bracket. Put concatenate. Then select the month first because this is how we put the month in the key first and then select the expense type later because this is the format that we've used in the expense sheet under the key column where month comes first and expense type comes later. Comma. Now sum range, go back to expenses and select the value column and close the bracket. This way anything that is to do with rent in the month of Feb will show up here in this cell. Now before we go ahead and copy this formula across all the other cells, we need to lock a few cells. We need to lock this column A coming from expense sheet. We need to lock column B here only. So put a dollar sign before B only. And we need to lock row two here. So it only picks up the month and put a dollar sign before two. And then we need to lock column F in expense sheet, which is pulling out the values. Now we can copy paste across all the months and all the expense types. See now Feb is pulling out the total expense data. So the total expense in Feb is 837.22, which is broken down into these expense bucket like this. So we spent 111 on the car, 112 on fuel and so on and so forth. Once I'm done preparing the sheet, I'll go and put more data in the expense and the income sheet. So we can see this into a better shape versus empty cells. Now the expenses are here. Let's bring in the income. For income, you can simply pull the average income per month into here. Equal, go to income sheet, lock the formula here and copy paste it across months. And this is the net balance. So income minus expenses. So after subtracting the expenses from the income, I get my net balance or net saving here. Here the idea is to get past 12 months data. So if you have past 12 months data, I will pull out an average here, average of past 12 months data. Although I don't have past 12 months, so I'll only select whatever I have here, which is six months. Here we'll pull out six months of average, average bracket, select the cells, and here we'll do three months of data. Now there are certain expenses which are one time, but very big in size. And hence it's unfair for me to allocate those particular expenses in a particular month. One example is vacation or second example for me is big purchases. Big purchases for me include anything that is above thousand dollars. I try to track such expenses separately and allocate the entire expense over the months. 
instead of charging into one particular month. So for that purpose, we'll create two new sheets. One is for vacation, one is for shopping. Here we'll put our budget. So let's say my vacation budget is $8,000. Below it, I will capture all the expenses once that vacation happens. Total all the expenses, subtract all the expenses from the budget and idly the balance towards the end of the year here should be zero. If there is any balance left towards the end of the year, I will go and change the budget to make it fall in line with the total expense. So the balance ends up being zero. So I'll budget both for big shopping items and vacation $8,000 each. Now somehow we need to bring this budget in the expense sheet. So we'll go to the expense sheet and here we'll give a gap of a few lines and make a section for allocated pre-aligned expenses. We'll bring the number here from the individual sheets and divide by 12. So we can capture one month's expense of vacation. Same for shopping and we'll give it a month here. We'll need to do this for all the months because we need to allocate this budget across all the months. So we copy it, paste it and change the month. Make sure when you copy it, you lock the cells. So same value is captured in the following cells. So now if there are any expenses pertaining to vacation or big shopping items, we won't capture them here because here we've already captured the estimated amount that we think that we will incur in the full year. We will just capture them in their individual sheets and make sure that the total expenses don't exceed the balance. In case they exceed the balance, we'll have to change the budget. So higher amount of budget is allocated each month in the expense sheet. And if the total expense is less than the budget, again, we change the budget and bring it down such that right amount is allocated to the expenses on monthly basis. Here we classify them as entertainment and shopping. Again, this classification is important. So the summary sheet can pick up all these numbers and club them into those sections. Make sure we update the key column as well. So the formula in the summary sheet works and picks up the numbers from the sheet. Now we'll go in the summary sheet and see if these numbers are reflected. See, now when we go in the summary sheet, we see these numbers are reflected. Now, as and when you get new expenses, you just need to add rows here and copy paste the data from your online statement and keep pasting it here. And once pasted, you just need to fill in the month column make sure that the key column is updated and then classify the expense between the key buckets that you've identified. I do it bi-monthly basis. So on the first and on the 15th of every month, I'll go open my online statement, pick up all the data and dump it here and then classify it into different buckets. And as and when new months come in, you can add a column here and add the title of the month and so on and so forth. So this is how the sheet will look once it's completely populated. The best piece here is to see the past 12 months, past six months and past three months data and see how the trends look like. What I like to do here is some conditional formatting, which is if past three months is greater in value than past six months, then it appears red. If it's less, then it appears green. This is how you do it. So for conditional formatting, click on conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, greater than, and then here select the cell with which we want to compare, which is M4 in this case, which is cell in the past six month column. And we'll code it as red if it's greater than M4. Remove the dollar signs here. So we can simply copy paste this rule across all the cells. Then again, we'll go on conditional formatting. This time we'll select less than and again compare with the same cell, but this time we will code it as green, which means if it's less than the past six month number, then it's green. Remove the dollar signs here. So we can simply copy paste this rule across all the cells. Then we'll copy the format by control C, select all the cells and then paste the format by alt E S and select format. So the ones in red means that they are higher than previous six months, which means this expense is going up, which is let's say gym expenses going up, network expenses are going up, groceries going down while utility is coming, groceries going up while utility is coming down and so on and so forth. So this way you can have a good idea of where your expenses are tracking. I'll put the same rule in past six months to compare versus past 12 months. Now, apart from simply tracking your performance versus the past period, you can also track your performance versus a budget. So we can put a budget column here. And for each of the line item, you can define a budget basis what you expect to spend or what you intend to spend in that particular line item. And now you can compare, let's say, I usually prefer comparing past three months performance versus the budget. Again, you can put a conditional formatting in order to highlight the ones which are above the budget. So anything which is red means it is above the budget. So the budget here was 106, but we ended up spending 108 and so on and so forth.
Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully by now you would be ready to prepare your own expense tracking tool. Thank you.